we meet up in the long and fast Anderstorp track in Smallland. It's easy to assume that the tension is rising high with the 11th and 12th race lurking around the corner. Beautiful weather, over 4 kilometres of flat tarmac and a big grid will most certainly give the audience a race that will not be forgotten. Right then, hello and welcome back to the Swedish Touring Car Championship, rounds 11 and 12 coming from Anderstort for two more 13 lap races. And once again, we're just going to start at the back. The weather so far this season has been very kind to us. We've actually had dry conditions, but you know, we could get rain later on in the championship. There's only two more rounds after this left to go, four more races so we are coming to the end of the championship and to the end of this series as well. So uh, without further ado, let's just go and see the uh, starting lineup for race number one of the weekend and round 11 of the championship. So your top three after qualifying then, Mathias Ekstrom takes pole position, Jan Nilsson and Tommy Rustad round out the top three. And I'm starting at the back in 16th place with Netten Lindgren alongside for company in the Peugeot 406. So let's get this race started then. Two, one, and go. Back at good old Anderstorp. Hopefully we can get some uh, good points finishing positions here. We haven't had the best of luck at Falkenberg last time, mate. Excuse me, pardon me coming through. Right up into eighth place, made it halfway. And pulling away from the back end of the field. Got to remember the rhythm of the track. I'm not even going to break. After what happened at Falkenberg last time, I'm not even going to break for the corners. I'm just going to let off early and uh, hope that the car slows itself down on its own. Rather than me breaking and the car veering to the left and going into the tire barrier. So, yeah, I'm going to be uh, a little bit slower on the corners, but hopefully it should be worth it. It's not doing too much harm either. We are gaining my teammate in front of the Honda and the Volvo. Yeah, it doesn't seem to be doing too much in the way of damage at all. We are gaining on the corners, which is very surprising. Take the inside line. Not quite. There we go, lap one complete. 12 to go and gained another position on the Volvo as well, which is brilliant. Right, time to get past the Honda and my teammate of Thomas Shi. If my pronunciations of the names are wrong, then I do apologise. Oh, well, there you go. That's the problem about lifting off on the corners. The AI just bash you out the way. Come on, sling your hook. Get out the way. Just get out the bloody way, for goodness sake. Right, time to do all that work again. Uh, shouldn't be too bad, though. I mean, as long as we're in a good points finishing position or just slide off the circuit, that's fine, too. Uh, and again, different track. Same problems. Still in eighth place. Eleven laps to go. There we go. At least we get a good run going through turn one, so that's fine. Time to catch up to the Volvo again. And again, the bloody AI. You brake for the corners. The, the car in front of you is braking heavily, so you brake as well. 
and they just go completely up your rear end. You cannot do anything about it. That is what really bugs me about this game. You cannot do anything. You are the only car in the entire field that is movable. Or go, they move you out the way. You cannot do anything to them. Get out of the bloody way. Oh, for God's sake. Now, we were here not that long ago, and I'd completely forgotten how to take some of these corners. Get out of the way, please. Now, watch. Going into this corner again, I'll try and break a little bit later, and I will still get punted out of the way. Guaranteed. The corner is too sharp. You cannot take it too fast. And there we go. Get punted out of the way. Thank you very much. Let's cut the corner. Hopefully the stewards won't notice. Oh, get out of the bloody way. You annoying ignoramus. Go. We haven't lost touch with the second group, which I suppose is plus, but I don't know. This looks like it's going to be another Falkenberg all over again. As long as we can get the BMW out of the way. He seems to be a bit of an issue, the BMW. He's always getting in the way. He isn't independent as well. That's why he's got red numbers. Right, next is the Honda. Dispose of him. Up into sixth. Right, now my teammate. Will my teammate play fair? Nope, I'm just going to get punted by the Volvo. Oh no, it was a Honda. Okay, thanks a lot for that. So incredibly annoying, but there you go. Right, at least we made it up into fourth. If we can pull away now, we shouldn't have any issues going through that one corner. Which seems to be the main thorn in our side with this track. I don't necessarily want to keep braking for it because that makes the car unstable. go. Eight laps to go. And we are nine seconds behind Tommy Rustad. Not sure if we're going to be able to make that up. You can just see him in the distance there, I think. Even lifting off the car still spins. How glorious. Do we lose much time? Nope. That's the main thing. the back markers, or that might have been the leader. I'm not sure. I 
hopefully we might be able to catch up a little bit of time. We were nine seconds back. Oh, it looks like it. Yep. What we know. Nine seconds down to four. Okay, so it looks like we gain a massive increase during the mid part of the track. What about behind? No, nope, there's no one behind. Good. Careful on the cornering. Okay, we're gaining ever so slightly. There goes the rest of the drivers on the other part of the circuit. I think here is where we gain the most time because the, uh, the CPU doesn't really take that corner the highest rate of speed. Turn one as well, so the last turn or the second to last turn and turn one are the main gaining points for time. And you see we can really force a car through the turn and uh, take second place. Hooray! Right, if I can be far enough ahead without him ramming our chuff going into the turn by lifting off, that'll be fine. Good. And there's a leader directly ahead. So I think we're about six seconds back from him. Gaining slowly. Don't think we're going to be in the way of back markers this time around because the uh, well, the laps are a lot sh la uh, yeah, the laps are a lot less than they were at Falkenberg, and of course the track is that much longer. So So what is the time difference? We are 2.9, 2.99, just under three seconds back. And we've got five laps to go, so plenty of time. And uh, third and fourth are nowhere to be seen. Oh, yeah, even letting off the throttle Miles before the corner, the car still spins. It's alright, sets us up for the next corner. Kind of. Nope, stop sliding, you stupid machine. Bloody wrap up. Not lost that much time. About the same as we were on the previous lap. Right there. I think I remember last time we were here, it was a battle between me and the leader, and I came off second on that outing. Not by much, though. I think it was a right old tussle right down to the last lap. Get your arse back here. Reeling him in very slowly. 
third and fourth are still way back. Best lap so far at the moment, 122.1, which is not too bad, that's pretty average. Uh, it's just a case of getting past a bloody Audi, but we all know what Audi drivers are like. Take the inside line, and take the lead, hooray! With three laps to go. And the car decides to break loose for no reason, other than to be recalcitrant and annoying. And we're coming up to lap traffic as well, so that'll slow them down. If we can catch up to them, then that'll slow down the second place driver. Which, of course, is Netten Lindgren. There we go. Poor Netten. Goodbye. So we just got to hold on now for two and a half laps and we'll be fine. Easier said than done, especially when the car keeps doing that. So I would class this as some sort of redemption from Falkenberg. Which should pretty much put one foot into the championship. But uh, we'll see. It's only race one of the weekend. Anything can happen. Still two laps to go. throttle a little bit too late there. Oh, they got past Netton. That's not good. No, why did the car just decide to lose it there? I have no idea. This bloody game, I swear. Right, the ID's trying to get back. Okay, one lap to go. I think we should be okay, you know, if I don't make any mistakes, we should be fine. Coming up to some more back markers anyway. Oh, he's very close. No, I think we got this. As long as the AI don't get in the way. Catching up to the Honda Accord. And it, oh no, it's the Stratus. My word, the Stratus is usually mid-pack. Looks like he's down in 15th position. Wonder what has befallen the Stratus. No idea. Oh, well, that's for uh, them to figure out. We're just going to go and cruise 
to a victory. Another one for the season. Another 20 points to add to the total. And there we go. Race one and a race victory. And here are the race results then. So a perfect start to the race weekend then. 20 points in the bank. Matthias Ekstrom finished second. And Jan Nilsson finished third with 12 points. Last of the point scorers was Carl Rosenblad in 10th place. As we get ready then for race number two of the weekend. But that is tomorrow. I will see you all then. Thank you very much for watching as always. And I will see you for race two of the weekend and rain 12 of the championship. Take care, stay safe, and I'll see you then. Bye for now.